I have a pretty basic template for getting really big sounds on the Octatrack that I want to share with you. We're talking maximalist here, like think splatter painting, you know, throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. We want to get big sounds and we want to start with our climax because sometimes that's the most exciting part of a song. It's a method that I think can really help in getting ideas down quickly. Specific ear isn't necessary for this, I've just been using the Octatrack recently. We'll jam out and then I'll talk about how I built the track. I'm having so much fun with this beat. Also, sorry my voice is a little strained. I had an abscess on my tonsil this week, was in the hospital. Super fun times. I'm good now though. So when you start a blank project, which I did with this beat, you start from the start, right? You gotta put together a batch of samples that inspires you. So I'm gonna show you some of these. Various kicks and percussion sounds. This is one of the things that I do because I parameter lock a ton to a single percussion track. So just find a bunch of sounds that really inspire you off the get-go. Right, these sound familiar. The main sample that we're using here though is so cool and I want you to listen to it long form and then later on I'll talk about how I chopped it up. Yeah, so super lush, super beautiful, really complex and dense. You wanna start with stuff that's gonna work in your favor. So once I've got my samples, the first thing I focus on is establishing a main groove. In this case, it was a simple four on the floor beat, around 70 BPM. Just that kick and snare, right? Let's take a look at that snare track though, because clearly, you know, I have all these hits on my twos and my fours just the regular snare track, but then I have all these, these clicky clackety sounds parameter locked to various steps. Little reverse hits, DJ scratches, all this stuff that I kind of built up when I was stacking my samples in the first step. And then cool hits like this that spatially just add so much and don't really make sense in the context, but it's ear candy and mixing it high and with the rest of the snare sounds, really just adds that like, that element of what's going on. But again, it kind of goes with the main sample that's just acoustically rich. Next, I wanted to add kind of like a groovy low key hi-hat. I wanted to get something that felt like a ride cymbal, but wasn't quite exactly a ride cymbal. So I actually used this noise sample. It's a noise loop, really scratchy. And on the track that I'm using it on, I actually have an LFO, square wave, cutting the sample in and out. And I have a delay. And then I kind of just have it hitting semi-randomly to get that sample to restart at different spots and highlight different points in the noise texture. It gives you this nice sort of like scrapey sound. So that's just three tracks of percussion. And then our main sample is our fourth track. This is only four tracks, which is crazy based on just how dense it sounds, right? So we've stacked up our samples, we've established a main groove, and now we wanna incorporate our main sample, which I already chose. I kind of knew what I was gonna be using before I started to make this beat. So I've consistently put down trigs on the grid on each page to sort of overlap and rhythmically interplay with the kick. Having the sample time stretched on the Oct track forces those rhythms to interplay within the 70 BPM we have, and then interlocking that with the kick drum just leads to really cool variations. And if you remember, this is our main sample. So you can hear it's been pitch shifted. It maintains the sonic characteristics and spaciousness of this sample, but it's totally different, right? So don't worry about using samples that you think might have too much identity or character because by the time you're done with them, they're gonna sound totally different. So I knew I wanted these trigs put down rhythmically and then I just used the slice grid to break it into 16 slices and assign random locks until I found a baseline pattern that I liked. So I ended up with, two of those hits in a row 
on adjacent steps. And I was like, oh, that's gonna be like a, a staggered 16th note groove at the end of the second page of each phrase. And the way it just... The way it hits rhythmically was just so potent for me. And then you can see I kind of switched it up at the end and then put that little, not quite reverse, but it's like a, a strum that sucks back in on itself. Great phrasing there, Daniel. So yes, the key to all of this is really just creating new unexpected rhythm from existed implicit rhythm. It sounds a bit heady, but once you start messing with these textural samples, it kind of becomes second nature. So I got to talk about scenes, right? Cause we're using the octa track and I want to talk about this little glitchy sample here. So on my first scene, basically I have everything muted except for the main textural melody and this glitchy sample that I added in, which is muted on our default scene A. I trig locked various values of retrig at different points in this sample and pitched them to match the key of the song. So if you play this by itself with the main melody on this scene, it's a little hectic, right? It doesn't sound great. So that's every part of it. But when you mix it in and use it as like a glitch break, super cool, right? Similarly on scene 12, I just muted everything. So it's just our main sample. So yeah, using scenes to play around with mute groups is one of my favorite things to do on the Octa track in terms of performability. It's like a, an instant drop trick. My other two scenes are just a high pass resonant filter and a, a resonant low pass filter. And I use those the way I would do any other sort of, uh, you know, scene change tricks. Super easy to get out of hand and out of control, but really cool tools to be able to have at your disposal. I cannot wait to build up the rest of the song. It's gonna be so much fun. Let me know what methods you're using to get started with beats quickly. I, again, love this throw everything at the wall method. If you had fun, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and checking out my Patreon. I have different reward tiers and I actually offer lessons if you're interested in one-on-ones. And if you ever just wanna stop by and say, hey, check out my Instagram, at slowhaste. And I hope you're having a stellar time making whatever beats you're making. Peace.